All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create an assignment. Uh, and that is an assignment where students can actually submit their work. So as always, once you're in your Moodle course, you come up to edit mode and turn that on. Then you scroll down to wherever in the course you want to add that assignment. Uh, you select add an activity or assignment. Once in here, you come to all and you do assignment. And of course, of course, we've got a couple typical things, assignment, uh, the assignment name. So we're going to be creative and call it assignment number one. Description, largely I would say you can skip this unless there's like very short content, you know, in very short information, a sentence or so that would be useful here uh, and that you would display on the course page so that before students enter into this item, they have a sense of what it is. Uh, here you provide your instructions, um, you know, do this activity. You also, as always, have different uh, edit editing skills with the editing abilities with the HTML editor bar. So you can boldface bullet, you know, if you have a list of things they should be doing or looking at, uh, you can link to a resource. So it might be look at this and then come back. Note that you can also explain something using your video or audio tools here. So that's always an option as well. All right, so you provide that. If you have additional files, say maybe there is a document um, that goes into further detail. Maybe there is uh, a set of file, a file or files that they're working with. You know, they're doing graphic design and you want them to play around with a particular image. Once again, you can drag and drop those. Um, and I would leave this off of only show files during submission. Um, I would just leave them up there in general. So we got a couple more options under availability. Um, so the first is allow submissions from. Uh, I typically will just unmark this and once the course is up and running, they are ready to submit whenever. Due date is of course when it should, you know, when they need to have it due by. And that's important again for the calendar and other notifications for them. Cutoff date is the last date they can submit it. So what will happen is if they submit it after the due date, it will be marked as late and you'll see that in the grading section. Um, so for me, I'm always a fan of, I'll have the due date, the cutoff date, I really don't need. Um, and then a remind me, uh, remind me to grade. You may find this useful or not, but you know, within a certain amount of time, a reminder that you have to go in and grade those. So, um, other things you can play around with is submission types. So if you want them to just write it and provide online text, you can like they just type it into a box, you would have online text. Uh, but if you want them to submit a file, they can do that as well. Once uh, you can also identify how many, how many files they can upload, the maximum limit for them. And then you can choose the type of files and this can be really helpful. So if you select choose, um, you can kind of go through and select what type of files. Uh, so depending on your project, you know, you might say, well, this really should be a document. Um, so if I select document, it will, it will account for all of these. But if I want to be some, a bit more specific, I can choose, okay, these are the only documents I'll accept. I don't recommend going that far into it um, unless you're consistently running into an issue with students, but um, that is an option to play around with. If they're doing audio files, you may just want them to do that. Um, by and large, you know, I would say use this judiciously. Don't try to over regulate here because it can actually create more, more problems um, on the other side for students. Feedback, um, allowing this allows for several different options. Uh, so this allows for feedback comments. This allows you to annotate the PDF. So if they upload a document, you can actually do annotations on it. Uh, everything from like comments and underlining and circling, somewhat similar to what you can do say in a Google Doc or in a Word Doc, but you don't have to download the file, which is really cool. Uh, comment inline, I would, um, I would not actually use that. I, I can go into further detail, but it often creates more uh, more confusion and mess than, than needed. Submission ses uh, settings allow, so require students to click the submit button. You can use this or you can just, once it's uploaded, it's essentially submitted um, and then require students accept the submission statement. This is again, these are things I, I think 
it can help because it will confirm to them, but it can also be a hiccup if they don't see it and then they feel like I submitted it, but I didn't, they didn't see the submit button. Additional attempts, uh, again, I'm, I'm of the mindset of they can continue to, um, so I might do manually and allow maximum attempts unlimited, um, just so that if there's any problems or hiccups, worst case, I can, you know, remove those extra ones. Notifications is useful is uh, notifying graders about the submissions. So you probably want to turn this off, otherwise you'll get an email notification, or, or maybe you won't want to turn this off because you'll get a notification every time somebody submits something. Uh, and depending on your grading approach, that might be useful, or it just might be a lot more noise. Uh, notify graders about late, late uh, submissions. I typically, especially if, if it's after I've graded, you know, the batch of, of assignments that have been submitted, I will have that on just so that, you know, if I miss something, I know. Um, and then default uh, for notify student, this allows you that as you grade it, you will have a choice to notify students and that will be on. Grading, uh, you can either have none, uh, a scale, or points. Uh, and once you, if you're selecting points, you put in the maximum grade they can receive, and then you can choose the grading method. So simple direct grading is just putting a numerical score on it. Marking guide and rubric are more um, useful information that's more targeted for students to know and understand what it is that they, uh, they need to do in order to improve or where they may have missed points. Grading category, depending on your grading setup, you know, you'll have different categories. You'll have your discussions or participation. You'll have uh, major assignments, etc. Anonymous submissions, uh, you can do this and it's actually a really interesting feature because it allows for you to um, not know who the student is within the Moodle environment. The big problem with this one, of course, is that if they put their names on the document um, or they reveal something that you know is attached, then it doesn't, uh, that, that actually, you know, uh, eliminates the anonymity. This can be useful, and I've seen it used before as a way of really trying to like not necessarily carry any connotation when you go to look at a student's paper. Um, sometimes it's really helpful, and other times it's not. So just kind of know that it is a really useful that is a it's a feature you can play around with. Um, I'm gonna skip over these other ones um, because it's not as relevant, and then jump into activity completion. Here again, you can not indicate activity completion or uh, have them manually check it off or show when activity is done. Typically, I will have it, uh, they must view it and they must submit it um, in order for them to consider it done. Um, expected completed on, I tend to not use that only because we already have the due date. So once you're done, you just hit save and return to course. So that is it for assignment. I hope this is helpful. Thank you.